Limited. Hey, everybody. Got a little dirt road here. Thought I'd talk about, I see lots of people saying uh, things about the 250L. Of course, I hear good and bad. And a lot of times on the bad, I think they don't even own one or never did. But uh, I just wonder what people expect when they buy a dual sport. What do you expect out of a dual sport? You know? Uh, a dual sport is kind of, it's a combination between off-road and street, of course. Which means they got to make it kind of decent uh, for on-road and for off-road. Not just one or the other. So, uh, if you want to go dirt all the time, buy a dirt bike. If you want to go street all the time, buy a street bike. Guarantee you a uh, CRF 250X, a lot better in the off road than a 250L. And a, you know, Honda Shadow is a lot better on the street than a CRF 250L. I bought the CRF 250L because I wanted a combination of both. Now, you can go extreme and do a 450L for uh, on and off road. That's a, another option. But any bike is that way. If you buy a KTM, you know, that's a dual sport, they're pretty good off road, no doubt about it. But they're not so great on road, so um, there's got to be a a deciding factor what you want to do. You either want to go off road, or you want to go on road, or you want to do both and just buy a dual sport. And you don't expect amazing at either one. So that's the cool part. I can go is these days around here anyway. There's not a lot of places you can ride dirt bikes. The roads that I just rode on, you can't actually ride a dirt bike. They're not allowed on there, which is absolutely stupid because you can ride a four-wheeler on that road, but your dirt bikes are not allowed. All the trails around here, ATVs are allowed on now, except for the ones that says no ATVs, but a dirt bike is not. Now, how is that fair? That's about one of the stupidest rules I've ever heard of them come up with. Um, to me, it's not fair to let an ATV ride and a dirt bike can't, or vice versa. But that's what they do because they can. So, the cool part about having a dual sport is you don't have to haul it on a trailer. You can. You can uh, ride it to where you're going, off-road, and then go off-road, ride back. Now, that's uh, if you don't break down or tear something up when you're woods riding. But I actually never do. Not saying it can't happen, but it hasn't. I don't ever actually break anything on this thing. It just, it just keeps going. Uh, I've never had a flat on the TPDL. I've never, uh, I've never had any problem whatsoever. Anything break. I've been with people that has broke their bikes, but I haven't. It's a beautiful day down here. It's gonna be 90 degrees. It's gonna get hot, but right now it's beautiful. It's only 8:42 a.m. Mark Twain National Forest, which is okay, but it's pretty limited on what you can do, what they allow you to do. I remember back in the day we used to ride, man, I mean, that's been a lot of years ago, but there wasn't many trails. We made the trails. We went out and you could just ride, take off through the woods. And then idiots got out there throwing the beer cans and trash down and that made a big difference on what we can do now. Tearing the heck out of things. 
instead of respecting the land, just making trails and enjoying the, the ride. But for me, a dual sport's the way to go nowadays. It's a lot of fun, easy, hardly any maintenance at all on this thing. You just ride. And uh, it's definitely the best thing for me. I'm averaging I will keep this 250L until I get so old. Uh, I can't take a step ladder and get on it, I guess. Step ladder to get on it and an oxygen bottle strapped on back and old woodsman heading down the road. Thank you all for watching the channel. Subscribe, click the thumbs up. Check out my Amazon store. I'll put the link below for your Sierra 250L parts. Catch you all on the next one. Right on.